Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is August the 28th, 2016. Seems that Operation Euphrates Shield is doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Shield ISIS from the Kurds. What is going on, as you can see, are bombings of the YPG. YPG and the yellow positions here are Kurdish positions, okay? They have not touched ISIS, which is in the gray positions, as you can see here. Not touched them. Now, from the report I did the other day, using a Kurd newspaper, they evacuated from Jerobolus to Azaz. They evacuated ISIS. Now, what I find odd here is Dabiq. Now, Dabiq is end time Islamic prophecy. That's where the end time war is going to be. Okay? So I will not be satisfied that the so called coalition is working against ISIS until Dabiq is totally cleared out. That will put a blow to ISIS that's supposed to be done. Now, let's get into what Turkey has done to the Kurds. And I'd like to thank Systemic Divide for giving this to me. More than 20 people were killed. First, the fire bomb dropped. People uh, tried to escape to the shelter when another bomb hit the same location, and we have more than 20 people were killed. Now, there are a ton of articles. I'm going to try to get them all and explain to you what's going on. Please pardon the pronunciations. So let's get started here so we can get through this. This is another Kurdish news site. Is the global coalition taking part in the Jarabolus massacres? Information was obtained of warplanes in the international coalition taking part in the massacre, which has happened today in the village of Bear Kosa, south of Jarabolus. Turkish army and its mercenaries targeted civilians in the village of Bear Kosa, 13 kilometers south of Jarabolus, 6 kilometers north of Sejur River, which left most of civilians in the village dead. It was said that the warplane of the International Coalition supported the Turkish Army and Mercenaries Group in the massacre, while the UN recently announced that they will support the Turkish Army and Mercenaries Group in Jarablus, though no formal statement was issued in this concern. Another massacre within three hours by the Turkish Army. The Turkish Army has committed another massacre in Sirisat village in Jarablus, leaving dozens of civilians dead. Sources of the Military Council of Jarablus and head of the Syrian Observatory of Human Rights assured that another massacre has taken place in Sirisat village by the Turkish Army forces after Bear Kosa massacre was committed this morning south of Jarablus. The source assured that dozens of civilians lost their lives due to the shelling of the Turkish warplanes and tanks on the village. So this is the second massacre by the forces of Justice and Development Party against civilians within three hours. ISIS executes five civilians, including a child in Al-Bab. The Pentagon refuses commenting on Turkish targeting of SDF points. American Defense Department refused to comment on the Turkish Army targeting of SDF points. Christopher Shroud, the spokesman of the Pentagon, said that Novosti News Agency on August 27th, I suggest that you ask such questions to representatives of the Turkish military. Shroud added, what I can say is that SDF is still a partner of us and one of the fastest and most effective forces countering ISIS gangs. 
And as you saw on the map earlier that I showed you, the Turkish army targets YPG and YPJ points in Afrin. Just as a side note, the YPJ is the most effective force in killing ISIS because it's an all-women's group. We also have a call for urgent action to Kurds in Europe. The umbrella organization of Kurds in Europe, KCDKE, called for an urgent action against the massacre the Turkish army carried out in Rojava where 20 civilians died. The Democratic People of Kurdistan Society Congress in Europe issued a written statement on the massacre the Turkish army carried out in the village of Bur el Kusa, located 13 kilometers to the south of Drabalus and 6 kilometers to the north of Sakur Creek. KCDKE recalled that 20 civilians were massacred and 50 civilians were injured during the attack and called upon all Kurds across Europe to go to democratic society centers and take action against the Turkish state's attempt to invade Rajova. Attempt to invade Rajova. The KCDKE described the Turkish state's attacks as an attempt to invade Rojava and emphasized that Turkey has now declared war upon all Kurdish people in order to reverse the recent gains in Rojava. War declared against Kurdish people. KCDKE noted that Turkey insisted on isolating Kurdish people's leader Abdullah Askalan and carries out massacres in the Kurdish towns it occupies with the support of international powers and called upon Kurdish people to show solidarity with the people of Rojava and help protect their recent gains. Actions everywhere. Lastly, KCDKE called upon all Kurds in democratic society centers to take urgent action in order to expose the hypocritical policies of the fascist Turkish state and its international allies. Now in case you're not sure, we're going to go over who the Kurds are. Here's a user's guide to Kurdish politics. This was from July 2015. That's when America first moved in to Inserlink Air Base. For the first time, fighters from all the big Kurdish factions in the Middle East, the whole alphabet soup of KDP, PUK, PKK, and YPG will be fighting alongside each other in the same battle. The defense of Cobain from ISIL in Syria. For the Kurds who aspire to statehood, it's a hugely powerful moment. But just who are these factions and why do they matter? So we'll focus mainly here on the PKK and the YPG and the YPD. It seems that most of your factions in the Kurds, you have a, a political executive faction, which would be the PYD for instance, and then you have a militia or fighting force that backs them. That would be the YPG and also the YPJ that fights alongside of the YPG, which is the YPG is the men's protection unit and the YPJ is the women's protection unit of the YPD, which is of course the Democratic Union Party. Now, according to the State Department, the PKK is listed as a terrorist organization on October 8, 1997. Now, let's check out Erdogan. Erdogan was a football player before being elected as mayor of Istanbul from the Islamist Welfare Party in 1994. He was stripped and banned from office after being sentenced to 10 months in prison for inciting religious intolerance in 1998, after which he abandoned openly Islamist policies and established the moderate conservative AKP in 2001. The AKP won a landslide victory in 2002 general election when the party's co-founder, Abdullah Gal, becoming prime minister until his government annulled Erdogan's ban from political office. Erdogan subsequently became prime minister in March 2003 after winning a seat in by election in CERT. Now we get to Erdogan's presidency, or whatever they call it there. 
Nationwide protests against the perceived authoritarianism of Erdogan's government began in May 2013, with the internationally criticized police crackdown resulting in 22 deaths and the stalling of EU membership negotiations. Following a split with longtime ally Fatula Gulen, Erdogan brought about large-scale judicial reforms that were criticized for threatening judicial independence. A $100 billion government corruption scandal in 2013 led to the arrest of Erdogan's close allies, with Erdogan himself incriminated after a recording was released on social media. Erdogan's government has since come under fire for electoral fraud, demeaning the Constitution, alleged human rights violations, and cracked down on press and social media, having blocked access to Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube on numerous occasions. Opposition journalists and politicians have thus branded him a dictator. Now, I haven't included a lot of things about what Erdogan has did. Half truth and lies about Turkey is one. Turkey's genocide today and yesterday is another video to watch. Another one is the latest US-led coalition strikes killed 45 citizens near Mom Beach. And of course you may want to watch Turkey's coup, what you need to know, our military is in danger and bombshell the Turkish coup and why it happened. Watch those videos and then you'll get an idea of what's really going on. In the video here that I did titled Half Truths and Lies About Turkey, you should read in the description box there's a link to a Human Rights Watch website. Read what's in that Human Rights Watch website. Erdogan threw Human Rights Watch out of there. Erdogan did not want them to see what was going on with these people. So I'm telling you, there is a genocide going on. And this goes really deep. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off. And as always, I've got your six.